Red hot inflation. Inflation is taking over the market, ladies and gentlemen, today, dominating the headlines. Everybody been waiting, um, waiting to hear from the Bureau of Labor Statistics what it, in the world is going on with inflation. As we all know, inflation is at the highest it's ever been throughout my lifetime. I'm 37 years old. Inflation just hit an all-time high since 1982. I was born in 1984, so this is the first time me actually living in a market of inflation. So to speak on inflation, high inflation, I have to go back and look at old data. I got to say this, ladies and gentlemen, the pace we're on by this summertime, we're going to be in double digits. But before we go any further, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, get ready. This is the Prince of Investment. My name is Prince Dykes. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you are now tuned into the Investor Show. As always, this is your gracious host, the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. And yes, as you can see in the, the topic, the rise in inflation, that's what we're going to talk about today. So today, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released a report today called the CPI, the Consumer Price Index Summary. The Consumer Price Index Summary tells us what, aka what we know as inflation. If you don't know what inflation is or you're not familiar with it, get used to it because it's not going anywhere anytime soon. You can find this report on bls.gov. That is B. LS.gov. This is the Bureau of Labor Statistics.gov. They release the Consumer Price Index report every month to let us know what's going on with inflation. And as you know, inflation hit 7.5% overall, the highest inflation we had since 1982. In 1982, we ran into high inflation. When inflation hit double digits of 13% at its peak, I think it was about 132 before it started to taper down. And the question I gotta ask everybody out there that's catching live or the playback, do you think inflation will hit double digits? And if so, when will it hit double digits? As you know, the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, uh, the Federal Reserve Chair, Jerome Powell, AKA the Feds, they have came out and said, we're standing by to use our, our array of tools to combat this thing called inflation. Ladies and gentlemen, why are we having high inflation? Inflation was induced by our economy. You remember we had this thing called the pandemic that we're kind of still in right now? When this pandemic took off, you remember they lowered interest rates. They lowered interest rates to an all-time low in a way to stimulate the economy. When you lower interest rates, money becomes easier to borrow. Companies like to borrow more money. Money is easier to borrow. Also, money is very cheap to borrow. So companies use money to go out, build, uh, invest, companies, people, whatever the case may be, lend out money. Hey, let's open up the floodgates. Let's make money easier to borrow. Also, the government came back. Remember those trillion dollar stimulus package? $1.9 trillion has been approved by Congress, the largest stimulus package ever. Then the next month is like, oh, yeah, another trillion dollar package has been stim to stimulate the economy. And you heard about these things called PPP loans that banks, um, that businesses got. And you saw the average American get stimulus checks, those stimulus checks that popped up in your banking account. Those were those trillions of dollars went and probably a ton of other places that we're not familiar. Of. I actually read that report, but it's money goes so many places that's supposed to do things that end up doing nothing into somebody else's pockets. You know how that roll. Anywhere you find money, you will find some form of corruption. That's just my honest belief. Now, it's just part of human nature. So anyway, let's get back to the point, uh, the situation at hand. Inflation, when you push this much money into the economy out of the blue, you have people sitting at home, money's being pushed, you know, then President Biden gets elected and he comes in and says, hey, I can out top President Trump. Here's my stimulus package. He passes out a trillion dollar stimulus package, passes out money, and also he gives people back their income tax credit. Meaning this is the I mean child income tax credit or child, well, child credit, I'm sorry, not income tax credit, but a child credit. So for every child you had, you got an additional two hundred and fifty dollars that just popped up in your bank account to do whatever you wanted to do at your leisure, ladies and gentlemen. You probably saw it. You got that child tax credit coming in. Also, not only did you get the child tax credit going in, you also had um the child tax credit coming in, you also had the average, every person, I think every person got a $1,200 check at least once or twice. So you have low interest rates and you're essentially just printing money out of the thin air and giving it to people. This is always uh, 
going to have an impact on inflation. Inflation is the cost of goods and services as uh, the price and the cost of goods and services as they rise over a period of time. For prime example, why is it so important? Because what's um, is a million dollars really worth anything if a loaf of bread costs a hundred thousand dollars? This was an act of war. What countries would do to each other back in it was very popular in World War II, where you would see countries would go in, they would print a bunch of counterfeit money of a country, and then just dump it on its shores. This would cause massive inflation and wreck the economy. This is why it's red hot. This is why it's very important. Now we talked about how we got here. Now that we're here. What are we going to do about it? First thing the Federal Reserve said they're going to do, they said, hey, we're standing by. We're going to raise interest rates. Also, on top of raising um, interest rates, we're going to taper back our bond purchasing program. You know, that's a, a asset purchasing program where the federal government is purchasing assets. Let's just imagine if somebody would have uh, in your neighborhood, like to say, I, I own a house in my neighborhood and um the government prints money and comes in and just started buying houses in my neighborhood like crazy. What is that going to do to the value of my house? It's going to push the value of my house up. If the government slows down buying houses in my neighborhood, it's going to slowly won't decrease the value of my house, but the price of the value, the estimated price maybe drop a little bit. So supply and demand. So you have a buyer that's strong, the government, that's what they were doing, aka pumping money into the market. That's the simplest way to put it. They just pump money, printed money, pumped into the market. They brought stocks, they brought assets. So now they're using fancy words of, hey, we're going to get some of these assets off our balance sheets and we're going to taper our asset purchasing. Meaning that, hey, we're going to stop buying so much stuff and we're going to decrease the amount of stuff that we're buying to cool off the market. So they're doing that. They are they started they slowed down the asset purchasing and now the federal government they haven't came in yet. But we expect by next month the Federal Reserve will probably raise interest rate by 0.25. So when we have this going on, um now it's going to get us to our juicy part. Now, now we understand what happened and what the Federal Reserve is talking about doing. They announced, I think that was November, they started tapering on bonds, not bond, their bond purchasing, asset purchasing program. Now the federal government came out last month and said, hey, we're standing by and raise those interest rates we need it. So we had inflation going on. And it's my belief, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to double digit inflation by the summertime because the Federal Reserve, yes, they do have tools. Yes, they were interact. They were engaged those tools and utilized those tools. But it's not just imagine if you're driving down the road at 60 miles per hour and you slam on the brakes. Do you stop automatically? No, you slide a little bit. Then you stop. If you drive down the road at 60 miles per hour and you slowly ease on the brakes, do you stop automatically or you stop later on? You know you're going to stop later on. I think that they're going to uh, raise uh, the interest rate slowly over time to chase down inflation. And it may be it's going to take a while before um, we see that to start to reverse inflation or to even see inflation stall out. I think by the summertime, the, way, the pace we're definitely on right now, we'll, we'll be at inflation at 10 percent July, August time frame. So we'll stand by for that. Late August, late summer is when I'm projecting we hit our double digit, double digit inflation the first time in about 30, about 40 years. It'd be 40 years by that time. So going from 1982 all the way to 2022. So what we're going to do today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go through, we're going to go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You know, we're going to take a quick break. I mean, we're going to take a very quick break. And after that break, we're going to head over to the Bureau of Labor Statistics gov. And we're going to review the um, consumer price index that came out this morning that was released to talk about inflation. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.
and we are back here live with the Prince of Investment coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, uh, coming to you guys live via Honolulu, Hawaii, beautiful state of Denver, Colorado via Honolulu, Hawaii. Sometimes I get mixed up, but here we're back. Now we're going to talk about we earlier we talked about the beginning of the show before the break. We talked about inflation, what it was, how it started. Uh, what induced this high inflation that we're uh, currently experiencing and what the Federal Reserve is talking about doing to combat that inflation. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. The report that came out today, February 10th, today at 8.30 a.m. East Coast time, about six hours ago, something like that. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight down into it. This is the Consumer Price Index. The Consumer Price Index they're saying that inflation in January rose by 0.6% in January on a seasonal adjusted basis. Now, 0.6 over the last uh, over the last 10 months, this is the seventh time over the last 10 months inflation has raised by 0.5%. That means that every month in for the last seven months, inflation has raised by 0.5%. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at 7.5% inflation. Now that we are at 7.5% inflation, this means that we will be in a double digits if we keep on this pace in February if we hit 0.5. In March, we hit 0.5. In April, in May, in June, and July, you can do the math and say well, the pace we're on. In January, we rose by 0 0.06 on inflation. Now let's talk about the areas that got hit the most. The highest, the increase of indexes for food, energy, uh, food, it was food, energy, and shelter were the largest contributors to seasonal adjusted all items increases. The food index rose by 0.9 in January, following a 0.5% increase in December. The energy index increased by 0.9% um, over the month, with the increase in the electricity index being partially offset by the declines in gasoline index and the natural gas index. The index for all items, less food, energy rose by 0.6% in January. Now, here we go. Let's go down here. Let's see who had the highest inflation rate. We can look here and see coming in in January, the person that had the, the sector that had the highest inflation at 9.5. Get that 9.5. 9.5% is fuel oil. Why is this important? If inflation is at 7.5%, what is the average savings account? The average savings account in America in 2021 was 0 0.06. 0 0.06, not 0 0.6. Inflation for January was 0 0.6. Inflation, inflation overall is 7.5. Annually, annually, the average savings account is getting 0.06. It doesn't make a it doesn't take a mathematician to say if my savings account is getting 0.6, but my investment account is getting uh, not investment account. If my savings account is getting 0.6 and inflation is at 7.5, you're actually losing money. You're losing about 7 percent a year with the current inflation rate if it stays at what is that now. So investing is not an option at 7.5 percent. And inflation at 0.06%, investing is not optional. It's invest or lose right now. Very big when you come down to the inflationary marks. So the number one place was 9.5%. That came from fuel oil. Now, we know historically we got things going overseas. And we have things going on overseas. This usually in the Middle East, especially um, with the Ukraine and Russia deal. If things go down over there, usually oil prices go high. And I mean extremely high, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm anticipating a high energy run up. Um, I talked to some of my old school friends come from the 70s and the 80s and asked them, living in a high inflationary environment, what went up? We've seen fuel oil and we're seeing that right now, 9.5%. We're filling it at the pump. This is called invisible tax. This is the tax that's not taken out of your check. It's not taken out of your bank account. This tax is taken from your... Um, this tax is taken when you go to buy the price of your clothes, your shoes, your food, things you don't realize. This is where your money is going. This is called purchasing power. You have one dollar. How powerful is that dollar? The dollar is becoming weaker, ladies and gentlemen, as inflation goes higher. It's the invisible tax. 
It's the tax on your money that you can't see. You go to the grocery store, you spend $200, you look down at your bag and say, man, $200, where? That's inflation. But if you go back years ago, you'll see how much you could have brought. So let's take a little further look. Who had the lowest inflation in January? January, the person had the lowest inflation in the sector. We're looking at it here. It's at a 0.5, I no, 0.3%. I'm sorry, a negative 0.5 was utility piped gas. Utility piped gas actually went down. Good. But fuel oil, fuel, fuel oil went up. Gas piped gas services went down, which is pretty good to say. Now, looking at this, also coming in number two was electricity. Electricity and utilities are one of those things that I don't shop around my electricity bill. You just move to an area, whatever bill they give you, if they say you charged it and you did it, then you just did it. That was it, ladies and gentlemen. So you have to think about this. We have fuel oil. We have prices of gas going up. Um, what's happening? Um, what's going on in the world? 7.5%. Let's take a look and see some a little bit more here. The food index increased by 0.9 that we already talked about. The food away from home rose by 0.7. We got energy at 0.9. Um, all items less energy. This is the number that everybody tracks. This came in, it rose by 0.6%. That's higher than the average savings account in one month alone in January. So bringing everybody up to 7.5. The shelter index increased by 0.3% as well. The medical care index rose by 0.7% in January. The index for hospital services increased by 0.5%, and the index for prescri prescription drugs rose by 1.3%, while the index for physicianal services declined by 0.1%. Only a few indexes decreased in January. Let's talk about the ones who didn't increase. The only a few indexes decreased in January. Among those that did, that were we're lodging away from home. Hmm. Lodging away from home, like hotels. Um, I think hotels are on a decline anyway. Lodging away from home is at a negative 3.9%. And wireless telephone services, they went down by 0.1%. The index for new car index, the new vehicles, was unchanged over the month. So new vehicles stayed the same. You saw lodging away from home, a.k.a. hotels, and cell phone services actually decreased. Pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. These are things I can't live without. I have to have my phone. Um, I have to have electricity. So I don't really get a chance to like, oh, you know what? Let me shop around for my electricity unless I just went green and got panels on my house. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude today's episode. Um, hopefully you guys and girls got something out of this episode talking about reviewing from the Bureau of Labor Statistics.gov going over the consumer price index that affects us every day. We saw that fuel oil went up 9.5% alone in January. And we saw that the declines in lodging and new cars stayed the same. And what was the other index? That was um, cell phones. Cell phones actually decreased. So cell phones decreased, hotels decreased, and um, fuel, uh, not fuel, but uh, new cars. Fuel oil, the highest gas, actually kind of went down a little bit, but not a whole lot. But a lot of things going on. Now we have to stand by. When we see inflation, inflation go up, we see the market dump a little bit. So that's something to keep an eye on. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, inflation is at 7.5%. Um, my name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investment. And to the next video podcast, cartoon, book, or whatever else crazy you see me do across the road, across the globe, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.